Welcome back to another video. Uh, I want to talk about waste today and more specifically my waste and um, composting toilets, uh, different options available in that regard. Um, try and address some questions people have about them. Um, but before I begin that, I want to talk about my situation here on the property specifically. Um, there was planning applied for this place by the previous owner, which was denied because uh, it's not suitable ground for a septic tank. Now there's, uh, he applied for a per, uh, percolating septic tank, so there's probably options out there available. They'd just be very expensive. So I would ne not be able to install a regular toilet here anyway. And that was something my solicitor did uh, talk to me about, but I told her that it's fine. I don't need a septic tank. Um, and another thing is that the river that runs through the property here is a, it's an SAC, it's a special area conservation. So uh, it's having a septic tank that close to the river is probably impossible to get now. Um, there are options that you could do if you wanted to have a flushing toilet. You could have constructed wetlands or reed beds. I touched on that a little, that concept a little bit with this ditch that I'm looking at here, which I'm going to use for my grey water. Um, but what I'm doing is, and this was always my plan anyway, even if there was a septic tank in place, I would use a compost toilet. Um, it just seems like such a waste to use completely fine drinking water, the fossil fuels, everything else involved in pumping all of this water to the property and then pumping it out and then filtering it and cleaning it before it goes in the ocean. Some places don't even clean it and it just goes out raw. Um, so yeah, I, I like the idea of having a closed system and recycling that waste in to the property. Um, and it's something that's, it's not a new concept. I mean, the, there is no toilet here. There's not, there's no toilet in any of these old cottages. This is what people have always done. The flush toilet is a completely new thing. The, the sit down toilet, um, that's a fairly new idea as well. Um, like in, I can't remember what period of Japan, but there, in cities in Japan, I think it's the same thing in London. A lot of big cities back in the past. But uh, I'm gonna speak specifically about Japan because I, I do have a vague memory of how this system works there specifically. And there used to be like companies that were set up to go around the streets and collect people's waste. And then they would bring it back and compost it and sell it to farmers. And uh, there was even like gang warfare over territory between these companies for collecting these wastes because um because there's certain areas um the the manure of certain people like the the wealthy the elites of the time the, their manure was worth more um than the manure of the commoners because they had better diets and like that was the thinking uh back then um it's it's and it's still used in China. It's still used in some places. Um, I wouldn't use it directly on my food, like on my vegetables. That's like I'm not going to throw human manure on uh, on my lettuce, you know. Um, but uh, it's it's really good to still use on. You can use it on your fruit trees. You can use it on your berry bushes and use it as mulch. <clears throat> Which is how I'm going to use it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you what I have inside and then we'll come back and I'll talk about these barrels in a second. And just as a matter of interest, you might remember from my foraging stuff with wild garlic that my kitchen was smaller. Uh, I've actually made it bigger. I knocked down this wall. Um, so now this bedroom. I've just extended the size of my kitchen. I've added a back window to it. So it's much brighter, much nicer to 
to work in. Uh, <clears throat> and then in here is the, oh, the toilet room. And there it is. You can see there was a toilet in here, which I've removed. This is a bucket that I got on Amazon and the lid is the toilet seat. And I use wood shavings, uh, like hamster bedding and stuff like that, which is cheap. Uh, I think about seven, it's like seven euro. Gives me enough wood chips to last, I don't know, well over a month, two months, a long time. So, and then I have this other bucket here, which I have the wood shavings in. So when you go to the toilet, you do your thing, you just grab a handful of that and bury it like a cat. It's like a litter box for humans. And once that's full, then, then you take that out to the barrels and you empty it in the barrels. And I'll just show you that brand that I use is this one here. There you go. Um, cheap, 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 easy. Um, people have used other materials um, like grass clippings, leaves, wood chips, stuff like that. Um, I've messed around with different materials. I found that that's the best. Um, yeah. And then a lot of people are concerned about smell. Like that's one thing I was worried about when I first started or researching this was what happens with like smell, all that stuff. When you're like, it's, if you've ever composted anything before, when you um, add carbon material, there is no smell. So the wood chips, um, we'll just cover everything up. And prior to that, smells just like any other toilet, you know. Um, and then I think it's actually cleaner to use a compost toilet rather than um, having water splashing everywhere and spreading bacteria all over the walls. I don't know if anybody is aware of this, but uh, bathrooms are filthy places. <laughs> Um, whereas with the compost system, there is no vapors and spray going everywhere. It's all contained in that bucket. And then once I'm finished with the bucket, I throw in some bleach and um, fill it up with water and let it sit for two or three days and call it clean, you know? Um, so yeah, I emptied into these barrels. I should, probably shouldn't have sat down because I need to show you this one sec. So these barrels here, these are 250 litre barrels. I've got holes drilled in the bottom for drainage. There's a gap here to allow for ventilation and there's insect netting covering it. So, and then this is to stop the rain from going in. Another thing that's important to point out about these is that they're sitting on stones to allow for that drainage. Um, and yeah, the, as, as far as the barrels go, this is where in the bucket, in the the bathroom, there's no smell in there, but there will be a smell out here. But I've been in public bathrooms that smell worse than out here. Um, and the process is, if you've ever changed a baby's diaper, like I find this process to be less disgusting than changing a diaper. Hey, another cool thing about the using barrels like this is uh, I can compost meat. <clears throat> so any anything, let's say you leave it in the fridge too long or or maybe bones or cartilage or whatever else that you're not going to eat, you can compost that stuff and you can leave it in the barrels and no pests are going to be able to get to it. Um, and yeah, or if you're ever dispatching some animals like I intend to in the future, like chickens or whatever, I can always put the carcasses in the barrels and that's a safe way to dispose of them, compost them and um, cycle them back into the system. Um, this one, this one lasted me five months. 
this one I'll be running into I don't know how long have I been using that one for I don't know probably three four months into that one so each one of these is going to be lasting me a long long time and you want to compost when you're when you have your pile or in my case a barrel set up you want to let it compost down for a minimum of one year preferably two years before you actually um, put it anywhere um, so let's say a barrel lasts me three months um, being on the low end of how long these could last for me um, I'd say if there was two of me if there was two people here three people would probably be closer to three months but that's four barrels a year and by the time you cycle back to the first one that should be composted down and ready to use uh, if you're not ready to use it you can just empty that barrel into a pile somewhere and let it compost down further and start using that barrel again so you're going in a cycle and if that let's say you're using after the one year and not doing the two years I think it'd be safe enough after one year Um, you're getting it's 250 litres but it's going to break down to about a half to three quarters of its mass so you're walking let's say a hundred litres of fertiliser every three months once you do your full cycle and you're going through it which is pretty amazing and saves you a lot of money and saves a lot of money on mulch and wood chips and compost and everything for your trees now what's the story with legality with these things that's another question i had um when i was looking into this and it's totally fine you can do it uh, the only thing you can't do is remove the waste from the property so it has to stay in situ um but yeah i've got a nice closed system it's nice and clean um i know some people will just use a pile somewhere if they have a big enough property and they have an area they don't really go to they'll just pile it up somewhere and let it compost outside uh, i like the barrels and um there's another compost toilet system like outhouses um hang on a second yeah so outhouses are a classic um composting toilet system you just have your your box built on top of a pit and you let everything go into the pit and you can throw in your carbon materials after yourself but in this book and I'm going to talk about books in another video but I'm going to share this yeah so on this book here John Seymour's self-sufficiency book he's got a whole two pages on his composting toilet. So this is John Seymour's, what he calls the Thunderbox toilet, which is very, very cool. I would love to build one of these one day. Um, but you can see here, there's the steps into the toilet. There's two holes here. <clears throat> and one hole is sealed up while one is in use. And everything piles up into this chamber below. And once this is full, you just move the toilet over to that and seal this. And it has these flues that will allow any uh, odors to escape. It's pretty cool, ingenious design. <clears throat> I think he got this from, um, where did he get the idea for this? Yeah, sorry, I'm just re <laughs> just reading it here. Um, yeah, so the design for this particular toilet comes from tropical countries. So you yeah, so I've seen pictures of these. Um, I can't remember what I Google searched, but these are, they're really cool. Um, and more hands off version than mine, but that's kind of the price you pay for being off grid. Like you have to be more interactive with all of your processes, including waste. So yeah, that like, that's uh, John Seymour's one. That was like a huge inspiration for myself. Um, but I've just kind of come up with my own method that works for me and my space and where I'm at as well. Like I don't have the time or money to be building something like that, but I can buy 
uh, those buckets on Amazon. I think they're like 40 or 50 euro or something. I got four of them. And then the barrels. Yeah, you'll have to source your own barrels. To, I, I got them from from a local. So, yeah, so flush toilets are a pretty ludicrous and expensive way to pollute perfectly good drinking water and the uh, intricate network of pipes and pumps and filters and it's just it's kind of mad when you think about the entire process of it all um, and every step of the way and it's perfectly good stuff you know that you can put back into your ground and and uh, help you produce food and create fertility and um yeah i could ramble on about it but i'm not gonna <laughs> but I, i'll finish by reading a, a little poem that john has on on the wall of his thunderbox toilet now the human being is a very strange beast with capabilities good and bad not frightened of nature, no, not in the least, our follies are often quite mad. The toilet that flushes fills our souls with glee, a brainwave by Thomas Crapper. Mixes shit with clean water and pours it out to sea, as if the dirt did not matter. Out of sight, out of mind, muck shoots down the pipes, an incredible fabric of magic. Squandering food for the soil as the water we spoil, it's a tale that is terribly tragic. But all is not lost, for at a marginal cost, another solution comes easy. The composting loo, yes that's our repost, and your tummy need not feel too queasy. The vent goes up high, sending gas to the skies, and the lid fits snug so no entry to flies. Two years it'll take our compost to make, and our river's not sorry the flush to forsake. No water, no tricks, it's all built with bricks. The shit in the kitchen weighs too. All go together making food for the soil in our marvellous thunderbox loo.